So my goal with this customization that I'm going to do next is to basically make my product embed a lot more compact. So this would be ideal if I wanted to fit a lot more products in the amount of space, or if I just wanted to make something that's a little bit less um, uh, intrusive, takes up a little bit less space, and then once you click on it, it will give you more information, open up that modal. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just go into the contents and I'm going to take a whole lot of things out. So let's say um, options, false, that's going to save me a lot of space. Say price, false, and I'm even going to say title, false. So just got the shoe and the button. Now, um, one thing that uh, I think would be nice before you click on this button is if you could actually see the price right in the button. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like so that you know what I'm talking about. Um, so sort of like like this example here. This is uh, something that uh, we actually saw in the wild that we thought was a cool example. So sort of recreate this, this look where you've got the price right there. So um, to do that, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to actually edit the template that creates this button. Because right now all it does is it renders that text that you've set. So editing the templates is a little bit more advanced because um, you need to uh, know a bit about mustache templates and what data is being rendered in the templates. Um, but the easiest way to do that is to just start with what's already there. So I'm going to go into the buy button JS code to get what the default template is. So this is um, Shopify slash buy button JS. This is an open source uh, repo. All the code is just here for you to look at. I'm going to go into source and templates. And this is where all the mustache templates that render the that render the components live. So in product.js, you can see I've got this mustache template for the button. And I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to add that here. And because we don't have a preprocessor in CodePen, I'm going to say change this to var. So that's not doing anything right now. Um, that's just uh, a string. Uh, mustache templates, um, if they're not being pre-processed, they're just, just strings like any other string. Um, so it's a little bit um, more complicated than you expect because we've got things like, um, you know, we want to make it look different if the button's disabled. But um, it's fairly straightforward to read. So we've just got access to this data object, and it's got um, classes on it, it's got properties, it's got data. So what we want to do if we want to put the price in that button is I'm going to go back to um, my source code. I'm going to find where the price template is, and I'm just going to put the price template inside the button template. So here's price. Got all this stuff here. Again, it's a little bit more complicated than you'd expect because it wants to check to make sure that there is a selected variant before displaying the price. So I'm just going to copy all of that. And I'm going to put it after the button text. So I'm going to add a nice little pipe character. And then paste that in. It's going to be mad at me because I've got a multi-line string. So I'm just going to put that all in one line. If you were doing this um, for real, you might want to use uh, string concatenation or um, string interpolation to make this a little bit less ridiculous and easy to read, but for the purposes of the demo, I'm just going to leave it there. So we've got our long template string here. So now I'm going to make my templates object. And for button, I'm going to add in my custom button template. So there we go. Now it has the uh, price and also the compare at price. You can also do something a bit simpler than this. I could also um, say just copy the default button template and add the word sale or um, add, I don't know, some sort of um, promotional text or whatever you want. Um, so what, right now, um, looks like there's not enough space for it all to be on one line, which is kind of a disappointment. So I'm going to update the width of the product in pixels. 
So the width is done here instead of in CSS because the iframe needs to know how wide the contents are to be able to resize. It's just one of those annoying uh, intricacies of iframes. I've got an extra space here that I don't want. And now I need to make this text all white because it's a little hard to read. So um, I can find out what keys I want to target in my styles by going back to my template. And I can see I've got um, price and I've got compare at. So I'm going to say price. And there's my uh, custom template there. I um, guess I can uh, stop for some questions here, if that's cool. Awesome, yeah. We have two from Andrew. Uh, Andrew's first question is, can you rearrange the order of elements on the page? Um, yeah, you can. Uh, so we have uh, an order array. Um, so I'm just going to show you what all the defaults for everything is. So I have this defaults file. So each component has this order array that has every possible um, sort of element um, in order. And so you basically would just copy that and change the order that you wanted the items to appear in. Awesome. And Andrew's second question is, is it possible to bring in all products from a site or is this just for single products? Um, yeah, you can bring in, uh, you could do either um, a collection or you could use, uh, you can bring in product products by array. Uh, so th that's the two ways to do it. You could, um, using the JSBI SDK, like theoretically fetch um, a list of all the IDs of all the products and then call create component for each uh, one or pass it in array. Uh, but the easiest way to do it would be with a collection, which I'll show you in a, in a little bit. Perfect. And so I the next thing was, oops, sorry. Did no, go ahead. I was just going to tell you to get question. <laughs> okay. Um, so now I'm just going to do a bit of um, style customization on this. Um, so I'm going to overlay my button over the shoe just to give me a little bit more space to work with. Um, so this is just going to be some custom CSS here. So position absolute uh, top zero or no, sorry, top 50% left. 50%. And then we've got this trick to get it all centered again where we go transform. And we go translate y negative 50%, translate x negative 50%. And now we're nice and centered. And since it's now absolutely positioned, we need to give it a width. So let's say um, 75%. Oh, maybe 80. Okay, and just going to make that see through so that it's not obstructing everything. You say background color, use RGBA. to make it oops, half um, half transparent. And so you, so you can see that I still got this um, hover style that turns it green. So I'm going to update the hover style here. So um, pseudo selectors are uh, can be styled, but we have to nest them under the uh, object for the parent. So I just make a key called um, colon hover. And let's just make it um, regular black. So we also have a focus style. So if I tab through, it turns green. So I'm going to update that as well. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it, and change that hover to focus. So now when I focus on it, it turns black. So um, right now that adds to cart, I want that to open a modal instead. So I'm going to add that button destination option. Uh, 
Cool. And so now I want to change my toggle and my checkout button to also be black with the same hover styles. I'm also going to give it a border radius of zero because I want kind of a more uh, streamlined look here. So let's say border radius zero. So now the cool thing about this being uh, just JavaScript is that without bringing in any kind of preprocessor or anything, I can share these styles without like, by just putting them in a variable. So I'm going to make a button styles object. And I'm going to copy in some of these styles here. So I want the color, the border radius, the hover, and the focus styles. Oops, using my Vim shortcuts. OK, so now um, because that's just a JavaScript object, I can use object.assign here. Here we go. And so now for my toggle, I can do the same thing. I can say button styles. And now I've got the same styles there. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the cart. Cart, and the key for that is button. So now I have the same styles there. And I only had to write it once. Um, so this is our nice little uh, embed that takes up a lot less space and sort of got this stylish modern look to it. Uh, I'm going to stop and go through a couple questions again if that is OK. Um, we've had two of the same questions coming in, and I don't know if this is possible for today's webinar, but would it be possible to demo collections? Yeah, I was actually about to do that. <laughs> so let's Perfect. do that. Um, so the reason that I wanted to make this nice and small is because it makes it easier to show more products at a time. So I'm going to change this to a collection embed. Uh, it's going to break because there's no collection with that ID. So I'm going to go back to my admin, go to collections. I have a sneakers collection. So I'm just going to grab the ID from the URL here and pass that through there. OK, so we've got a bit of a problem here, which is that we've used position absolute, um, but no position relative. So I'm going to add a style for the wrapper, which is just called product. So the wrapper uh, selectors are always the same name as the uh, embed itself. And let's say position relative. It's much better. And so the width for products in a collection um, has to be in CSS because the size of the iframe is the entire iframe that holds all the products rather than each individual one. So I'm going to add that to this. Oh, um, so since this is all responsive, I've used um, min width. So let's go min. Go. So now we have our collection of shoes all nicely lined up here. And I think this should be, yeah, nice and responsive. Go. And so now you can just sort of go through your collection here. Um, another option, if you say wanted to just add um, uh, two products, is you could say like specific products that aren't in a collection. So I can do product set, and I can pass in an array of IDs. Oh, that didn't work. Maybe it's just product. I think I might have forgotten how to do this one. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I'll have to look up the API for that one. I haven't used it in a while. Um, but anyways, oh, because that's a collection, not a product ID, that's why. So if I go back to products and I grab one product, and then I can grab another random product, like this one. I can show just two arbitrary products from my shop there. 